So if you've been a part of my community for the past little while, you may have seen my review on one of the Sharp View Cams and the Sony CCD SC5. JVC wanted their own version of those weird little cameras, and to me, this one is a weird mix of those two. Let's check it out and see if it's worth having in your collection. Welcome back to my camera collection. If you're new around here, my channel is all about checking out old school retro camcorders. And I like to go over the specs, the features, give you some of my negative opinions on it. And at the end of the video, I like to share some of the test footage that comes out of it. That being said, let's get into today's video. So this is the JVC GR SV3. And it came out in 1994 and it was made from 1994 to 1995. And I wasn't able to find find any information on the original price on this camcorder. So I asked chat GPT. It says that it was a thousand to about $1,200 when it first came out. Now to me, I don't really find that accurate, but it could be accurate. I don't know. I know a lot of camcorders back in the eighties and nineties were kind of expensive, but I didn't think it was going to be that expensive, especially for what you get here. But this is an entire different kind of camcorder than I have actually seen. And I'll tell you some of the other cool, weird features that this comes with as we go through the video. <laughs> so I think there was this weird point in camcorder history where they wanted to make companies wanted to make these camcorders as like picture kind of camcorders and you had sharp with their view cams they were the first company to put an lcd screen on a camcorder and they had the uh the, the screen and the tape deck separate from the uh lens itself and the lens spun on its own and then sony had its own along with the uh the sc5 i think you had like the sc7 and the sc9 but those ones kind of sat more or this way rather than uh, old school uh, disposable picture camera looking, I guess. And then I just found this JVC one, which is the SV3. Now, I don't know if there's other models that are similar to this. Yeah, this is kind of their take on that kind of weird camcorder. Looking around online, I couldn't really find a lot of information on it. Um, there's no specs on it. Um, a lot of the, the manuals that I could find, the websites made you want to, made you pay for them if you wanted to look at a digital manual from this camera. I didn't pay for one of those because I'm not going to pay for a, a digital copy of a of a user manual for a, a very outdated camera. I'm thinking that this was sold to the European market or like the UK market because all of the websites that I found that sold the digital copies of the user manuals, they were all in like pounds and uh, other euros and stuff like that. Looking on YouTube at other videos on this camera, I've seen a, a British guy who actually has a pretty decent video I will link uh, his video in the description or in the in the cards above and then there was another guy who I think was German so I think this camera is actually from Europe or it was marketed for Europe and not uh, the United States so this camera might be um, imported at some point but I didn't really find any specs on it so we're probably gonna skip the specs section of this video um, and just kind of go around the physical features and show you some of the features on it we'll start off I'll try and start off at the lens. <laughs> this is a, just a really weird camcorder. You don't have any form of a size of uh, lens thread or anything like that on there. There's no lens threads. You do have a power zoom and it is a F, uh, F4 to a 12 millimeter. I'm not exactly sure what any of that means, but it doesn't have, at least for me testing the recording, it doesn't have any form of autofocus. I think it just has a solid focal, focal point. So if you get too close to something, it won't um, autofocus to like some flowers or something. And I'll, you, you'll see some of that in the test footage as well. I got too close to some uh, like flowers I was uh, recording and it was just too blurry and it wouldn't actually autofocus on it. So I don't think there's any form of manual or autofocus on this. I think it's just a fixed focus. The other thing too is you have your rocker zoom, not really a rocker zoom. They're, they're two different buttons separate from each other. That is your telephoto and your wide. So your zoom and your zoom out. I couldn't find any form of uh, optical zoom specs on this, but 
I would guess it might be like 3x zoom or maybe a 5x. Like this thing does not zoom in hardly at all. It's almost kind of worthless in, in my opinion in the zoom aspect of it. Like you can zoom in just a tiny bit. But you do have a optical viewfinder, so it's not a digital viewfinder. So just like a, a disposable camera that you, you could uh, take pictures with, it's just like that. And you would hold it up just like this to look through the viewfinder and there's a green light and a red light that's in there you have a green light i think indicating that the camera's on and then the red light is for if you are recording or not now with the screen you do have this uh really handy lens cover and it pops open similar to the sony sc5 that i did a review on so you can actually use it in outdoor settings and sunny settings and it shades the screen so you can actually see it and i gotta say that it actually works very well so that's actually really handy and you can actually take this off if you don't want to use it but what's cool is you can use the screen as a selfie screen and you can record yourself so I guess this camera would have been perfect for vloggers back in 1994 but if you don't want to record yourself you know vlogging you can also just take the screen and it flips up like this and the image will actually flip once you get it about halfway and so you can use the screen to record like this and it works really well I actually like it I just wish that it would actually it sits at an angle a little bit so I wish that it would actually go flush with the camera which I get why it doesn't because you have the power switch here up on top that's the only annoying part of the the screen I guess depending on which way you want to look at it the top or the bottom of the screen you have a couple wheels here that is your brightness and your color so you can change the brightness of the screen and you can change how much color is in the screen. So you can give it less color or have it have more vibrant color. And then you have a couple buttons here on the front here as well. And this is a really weird thing. So you have play, message, and record. So there's, this camera has a little message program on it and it is up here on the power switch. And this is so weird. So I've never seen this in any other camcorder. So it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of like old school uh, caller ID, although you it's not. It's almost like leaving a note for somebody. Let's say you're back in the, the mid 90s and you got off work and you needed to go to the grocery store for something. Well, you needed to let your wife know that you were out grocery shopping. Well, what you could do is put this camera in message mode. You could push record on this uh, message system here. You can record yourself saying, I gotta go to the grocery store, yada, yada, and then hit record again to stop recording. And the camera will kind of turn off. It has a little tally lamp down here that will actually blink green. And so you just leave it there, you know, go do your grocery shopping or whatever. And your wife comes home and sees this sitting on the counter and sees the little green light blinking and be like, oh, she he, he left me a, a message. So she can open it up and hit play and the camera will actually rewind back and play your message back that you you recorded on the on the camera so she can see that oh okay he went he went grocery shopping okay he'll be back here soon so it's a weird message system like that I've never seen any other camera have that and it's so weird to be honest I don't know why anybody would even want to use it in that way but it's there <laughs> I don't know why you couldn't just like leave a note and be like hey I'm going grocery shopping I'll be back around six. I guess you could do it this way and have more fun with it. But then down on the bottom, you got a third button and that is your uh, display on and off. So you can actually turn the screen on and off, helping you save battery power if you want to and just uh, record looking through the viewfinder. And then you got your battery pack here on the side. This is actually a brand new battery from Caster and will come with this camera if you decide to buy this camera. Below that you have your uh, battery eject switch so you pull that your battery just comes out like that very simple then on the back side you have a big red record button definitely not hard to miss and then another weird thing on this camera is it has a latch that holds the door closed for the tape door so you actually hit switch it over to open and now this little latch opens up and you can actually see where the tape is. And you have a couple buttons that are in here. One is your eject for your tape. The other two is tracking for your uh, date adjust and then your auto date. And then you have a switch here for your EP or SP or extended play or short play for your tape time. Once you're done in there, close it and then hold it closed and switch it over to close and it locks closed. You do have a little compartment here for a uh, internal battery for the uh, internal Internal clock along with the uh, your viewfinder that you look through on this side you have a little rubber compartment the rubber just pops all the way off and you have your uh, video in and out sources so you can use this as a VCR as well so if you wanted to record a football game or something you could hook it up to your uh, your VCR or your TV switch it to uh, video in instead of video out hit record on this and it will record from your TV 
if you wanted to. And then you have your little switch here for your in and out selection, along with a wired remote, which I believe is a 3.5 millimeter jack on that guy. Now, another weird accessory that they made for this camera, it's in um, the video that I was talking about, the, the, guy, the guy who's British, I believe. I'll have a, a video in the cards for you if you wanna go check out his video. He kind of explains a little bit better, but pretty much JVC made a antenna for this camera. It was this little box that would plug into the side here, and it would plug into your video outsources and the little uh, black hole that's in between the yellow and white uh, plugins. Then you had this antenna that went super high. You could actually tune into TV stations that were in your local area, and you were able to have a portable TV and watch TV on the go. Now, the only problem with that nowadays is it was an analog signal, so you can't actually uh, access those TV channels anymore. So it is obsolete, but it is cool that they, they made it like that. With all those different kinds of accessories and uh, capabilities, for this camera. I can see this thing probably being about $1,000 to $1,200. I just thought that that was really cool. Um, it does suck that this rubber piece uh, doesn't have a little latch that makes it dangle from the camera. So you could easily lose this little rubber door here. Below the rubber door though, you do have a playback speaker along with a volume wheel to adjust the volume and a headphone jack to, I don't think you can monitor the audio, but I think it's more for playback if you want to put headphones in and listen to your video that way and not have to have the speaker blaring on it. Other thing I forgot on the front here, um, I did say it had a tally lamp, so it'll blink red if you're recording, and then it'll blink green if you have uh, a message to watch. But along with that, uh, right next to it is your mono microphone. You have your power switch here, kind of some different wording on here. You have video, which is your playback, camera, which is in red, which is your record mode. You have a timer, so it will record after, I don't know, five seconds or something like that. And then your message mode, which is what we talked about. Along with that, you have a little screen right here and it'll tell you if you if your battery is going to die and it'll tell you if you are recording or if you are not recording, so if you're stopped. But then it also tells you how long, how far along on the tape you are. The little thing actually pops up and opens and then you have all of your playback functions here along with a few other functions if you're in record mode. You can do retake, so if you just recorded a clip and you didn't like what you liked, you can hit retake and it'll rewind to the start point of that clip you just recorded recorded and you can tape over that. And then you have seek uh, retake so you can uh, f fast forward um, in that way as well. You have a five second record button so you can push that and it'll record for only five seconds. And then a reshoot button. Along with that it is all of your playback functions as well along with your display on and off and your counter reset. And then I generally don't talk about the bottom of the camera um, but it does have a very odd placed tripod mount here. It's on the very far it would be the left side. You better make sure you have a uh, if you're gonna put on a tripod have a pretty steady tripod because this thing will be uh, top heavy over on one side and it could tip over. But another thing that it has, and I guess you could use this for a couple different reasons, is it has a little kickstand right here. And I guess you could use it, you could prop it up while you're watching your videos back, or I guess if you want to be able to set it on a uh, the table and have it kind of point up towards you and then you could talk to the camera uh, if you're recording your message I guess I don't I don't know <laughs> but yeah it's got like a little kickstand so kind of weird but yeah I think that is all the physical features on this guy so now that we've gone over the physical features I'll give you a few of my gripes or opinions on it I don't like the zoom <laughs> the zoom it doesn't zoom far enough uh, and I kind of get why it doesn't zoom far enough because you really don't have much capacity in here to have a, a lens that zooms back far enough to make it however a power zoom lens works. I don't exactly know. There's no autofocus or manual focus. In fact, there's actually no, no settings on this camera at all that you can change. It's all just point and shoot. So there's no autofocus. There's no white balance. There's no nothing. It's just what you see is what you get here. It works, but uh, I've, I've played with some other uh, compact VHS or VHSC cameras and this one definitely just doesn't have very good video quality to it. You can definitely find some better ones out there and you'll see in the video footage. Now the other thing that kind of sucks for it is it there's no form of a lens cover so therefore um, you can't put any kind of a lens cover over it or some form of protection for it so if it does get scratched the your SOL. Not even glass the, 
the outer part is plastic that is protecting the, the actual lens itself, but there's no way to take it off and replace it. So if it gets scratched, that's that's it. You, you have a scratch lens now. <laughs> and the other thing is, is it's oddly heavy and it's oddly weird to hold. So um, you definitely want a wrist strap for it um, because I have fumbled it before and like almost dropped it. Wasn't wearing the uh, the wrist strap. So you, you definitely have to be a little bit more careful with it because there's not really good ways to hold it. Other than that, there's not really much else to complain about on this camcorder. I mean, you could complain that there's no manual settings on it, but you know what kind of camcorder this is. It's a VHSC camcorder. It wasn't meant to be professional in any kind of way. It was meant for watching TV and leaving messages for your loved ones. <laughs> along with just documenting uh, memories, I guess. So it, I think they just wanted to make it as easy as possible to use. If you want to buy this camera for yourself, I will have it listed up on my eBay store as of recording this video. Um, it will come with a new battery, um, a new charger, that I think is still in the box. Um, it also will have a used tape in it. And if you already have one of these for yourself, I will leave um, chargers, batteries, uh, video converters, tapes, and any other kind of accessory that will make this camera much funner and easier to use. Let's check out some of the video footage that comes out of this guy, shall we? So thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you leave a like. And if you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe because we talk about old school retro camcorders almost on a weekly basis. And on that note, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.